Uh, now, moving to the fifth attack that I want us to talk about. This is the stunning solar winds attack that happened actually in 2019 up until 2021, but it was late 2019. Let's see what the press says about this one. Business Insider has, uh, has raised articles about this one. Then we have another press article saying this is the worst nightmare in cybersecurity. Then we have people asking how worried should they be? BBC explaining that this is very, very serious. Then another article saying that it leaves the entire industry in panic. Then of course saying that this is a big generation five attack and how should you protect from generation five attacks? Then we have people saying that even after a year, the supply chain uh, methodology is still is still used and uh, it's still uh, feared by people. And last but not least, if we look at this one, it has 1,600,000 uh, searches. Even it has its official incident page. Now, if we look at this particular attack, guys, I'm going to be short on this one because we still have a lot to cover and we have just a few minutes left. So this is the biggest attack to supply, uh, supply chain attack in history. Now, as an attack type, it used the supply chain and backdoor. And let me give you a few words on what's a supply chain attack. Basically, if you are a cyber criminal organization and you want to target, I don't know, let's take an example, the European government, right? Taking a random example. So if you want to target the European government, it's very, it might be very difficult to enter the European government, right? Or the US government, or you name it, right? The Indian government, any government. So what do you do? You try to find one of the biggest and most secured suppliers that supply that particular government and much more. And you do your best to hack into that and use that product that is supplied to all those governments or government agencies. And through that product, which is trusted, you can hack into those. That's a supply chain attack. You kind of try to find the weakest link. And by any means, SolarWinds and most, uh, mostly Orion, which is the product that was uh, attacked over here, was not actually a weak link. The attackers were very smart. Basically, this one changed a bit the, uh, the type of, uh, of uh, the, the way we look at cybersecurity. This one made everybody look for uh, unified security, guys, because it was literally the, the most dangerous Generation 5 attacks. And I'll tell you why. So how did this happen? In September 2019, a classic email account hacking that, left to, that uh, led to credential theft that allowed the attackers to come in the network of, uh, of solar winds. Then, basically, this happened in September 2019, right? Then, one month later, in October 2019, the hackers were so slick, they tested the code injection. Basically, they made the proof of concept, like you do when you buy uh, any type of program, right? You do a test. So what did they do? They inserted a little bit of code into the Orion program. That code was meant to give them back the message. What is the processor type that this user is using on their computer? Some per, something super simple, something so simple that nobody would look at, right? Nobody would wonder why Orion, which was a remote management tool, right? An RMM would actually query what is the processor type, right? So. They saw that they managed to get through undetected. That means that basically what they did is they also purchased Orion, the program, they put it on their computer. And when they saw the code in Orion, they said, okay, we're in. Then they laid low. In February, 2020, they basically uh, in, uh, injected the malicious code called Sunburst, the one that was all over the news. So if you look at this particular process, this is very difficult. Uh, I, uh, I assume that a few people on here know about development. Guys, when you're in development, you make a computer type of code, uh, you actually make a person, uh, a human readable code, the one that the coders, the developers make, you make it in a computer type of code. And that basically seals it off. 
Now, in order for these guys to do this, they made a bait and switch and they made a temporary file that whenever a developer was modifying the Orion code, at the last stage of, uh, of transforming the code from uh, human written code into computer level code, they were switching and entering their information immediately. So it was literally one of the most uh, slick type of attacks in history. Now, in March 2020, SolarWinds pushed the Orion patch that was actually compromised to the world. And by the world, guys, I mean U.S. government agencies, a lot of big U.S. companies, and we'll see some names in the coming slide. Now, let's see what are the wall facts. More than 80,000 SolarWinds customers installed a malicious update, and uh, this includes a lot of major players. Then FireEye has discovered this in December 2020, after so many months. Then they literally ran a POC using harmless code, which, uh, uh, which we talked about. They, they pulled the bait and switch, and they literally opened to countless other attacks, including this little one that you see on the screen right now. So this is basically them leveraging their hack into one of the US agencies and sending spam or phishing from that agency's server. And as you can see, what they sent, a lot of people actually clicked on this and then they were fished. So this literally opened them up to so, but so many potential targets, it was a hard time picking the targets. So guys, this basically makes us uh, wonder, in order to avoid generation five attacks, we need unified cybersecurity. We need aggressive, very aggressive network and firewall decisions, business email compromise, spam, and many others. So, wall facts, this is the most gener uh, notorious Gen 5 attack in history because they leveraged weapon-grade hacking tools and basically used multi-vector approaches.